Hello, let me welcome you to my fourth video on the NCRT 11th bio. So in the previous classes we have discussed some of the things like uh, how we can define what are the defining characters of the living organisms. Some of the characters which we have seen in the previous classes are very important one. So I felt that we need to discuss them in the brief detail which we have discussed in, discussed in the previous classes. So now let me discuss uh, with the today's fact, uh, today's topic, it is all about our diversity. So before I am starting with the diversity, we must know what we basically mean by a word species. What exactly we mean by the word species? Species means what? Each different kind of organism represents a single species. Suppose we are having a large number of organisms of only one species, of only one kind, sorry, of only one kind, they will be representing only one species. If we are having a dog, if we are having a cat, they will be representing a different kind of species. So what I am saying, each different kind of organism, each different kind of organism represents a species. And when this species or this number of species in a given area are determined or are calculated, that will be lead to the formation of diversity of that particular area. So we are coming to know that diversity is what? The number of species in a given area. The number of species in a given area will be basically called as your diversity. Now if we talk about the present diversity, in the present diversity we have uh, 1.7 to 1.9 millions of species on the earth. And a very interesting fact, some of the books and some of the scientists and some of the researchers say that we have only find out the 10% of life or 10% of species on the earth. Still the 90% of the species on the world has to be recognized. Now, since we know that this, we are having this much amount only and this amount of species is basically increasing. A day by day we are finding new species of bacteria, we are finding new species of living organ, other kind of living organisms. So that's why we are saying that it increasingly, it increases continuously. Now, before we go further on, we must know that what we basically mean by the word nomenclature. Nomenclature is a very important word that we'll be discussing in the definition of taxonomy. Uh, to taxonomy, I'm coming to a word. Uh, if I'm talking about taxonomy, in the taxonomy means what? There are three words. First one is identification. Second one is classification. And the next word is basically your nomenclature. So taxonomy is what? It is a branch of bio which deals with identification to identify a living organism, classify them into the group and finally giving it a nomenclature name. Right? The process of giving name is basically called as the nomenclature. So it's a very important process. Right? Uh, <clears throat> so this branch is basically called as taxonomy and the father of taxonomy was your Carlos Linnaeus. Carlos Linnaeus was the father of taxonomy. Now let's move to the next very important stuff. Why I have written classification above and the nomenclature below. You will be coming to know by this particular process. So the scientific naming is basically based on the two very important factors. Or we can say it is based on the two important uh, principal guiding units. So these two impo important principal or criteria guiding units are basically ICBN, ICBN and ICZN, ICZN. So this ICBN is basically standing for International Court for Botanical Nomenclature, whereas your ICZN is standing for International Court for Zoological Nomenclature. Keep in the mind, this question comes basically for one marks in the CBSE board examination to write the full form of ICBN or ICZN or the Cardless Linnaeus question basically comes. Right? Who is father of taxonomy or what is taxonomy? Either th these three questions in the board examination are very common and very frequent. Now, 
let's move on to the next stuff we are moving to the very important thing in this chapter that is the binomial nomenclature so binomial nomenclature means what each and every living organism is given two names like in indian system my name is jitendra huda so this jitendra is first name and the huda is second name so keep in the mind a individual organism is also given two names so these two names will be having the first name called as the generic name right as i said it will be having two components the first component of the name or the first part of the name is called as generic name or the genus name right second one is specific epithet specific epithet means what the name of the species and this nomenclature was also given by your carlos linnaeus and he was also called as the father of taxonomy now now there are certain rules and regulations regarding this binomial nomenclature so these are very important so you must keep these uh, rules and guidelines into your mind so that you can go further on with the biology subject the first one is all the names are written in latin language or we can say they are derived from the latin language right they are derived or taken from the latin language just because it is a dead language right it is not there in the world nowadays so to preserve the dead language we have taken the nomenclature of the organism in the latin language now whenever you are writing uh, whenever they are when you are writing or whenever it is written it is basically written in italics or it is when it is hand written you have to underline it so that you can show the origin of it the origin of it is latin now as i said the first name denotes your genus and the second name denotes your species now when they are hand written they have to be underlined that is the next point of ours if they are printed they must be printed in italics now a very important come important factor comes or the rule comes genus name will always start with the capital letter but the species name will be starting with the small letter in our nomenclature we have j uh, my my name j will be capital and h will be capital but in the uh, um, like organisms like hume homo sapiens it will not be so the first name will be basically capital the genus name will be starting with the capital and the species name will be starting with the small letter now as i told you identification i feel you can come to know classification is a important terminology now classification means what we have identified we have basically identified a organism we knew that this organism could be a new organism so what we have done we have tried to uh, we have tried to find out the similar characters as that of a single group a group is having some uh, particular characters so we are finding the particular characters of that organism and putting them into that particular group now so before we go further let me discuss the word taxa so that you can understand very well taxa means what it is a category or i am calling it as a group or you can call it as a rank so now taxa basically is used for at in indicating the category at different level different level means what suppose i am taking an example of animal animal is a big group it is also called a taxa mammal mammal is also a big group it is also called as taxa now dog it is also comprising a lot of dogs it is also a taxa all of, all of these three are basically taxa but what is the difference between them the difference between them is very simple this is a big taxa and this animal taxa is comprising of the dogs and the mammals both but if you talk about the mammals mammals comes under animal but it comprises dogs also i are you getting my point so animal includes the mammal and the dogs and the mammal includes your dog right so this is your taxa so classification means what we are finding some particular character suppose in the case of uh, mammals we basically find the mammary glands so the organism which have mammary gland will be put up into the mammals right so that is a particular criteria of ours so this process of finding out and giving them a particular class or a taxa or a group or a rank is basically called as your classification so i feel uh, we are finished with the today's topic let me recall the things once again what we have seen what is the species 
each different kind of organism is basically called as a species and a number of species in a given area will be called as will be called as its uh, diversity and we have approximately 1.7 to 1.9 uh, million species on the earth which are discovered and this number is continuously increasing. We have seen uh, what is basically nomenclature, we have seen what is identification, classification and nomenclature. In the nomenclature we have seen that it is just a process of naming of an organism. If you are talking about the scientific naming, it is uh, like the criteria and the principle of it are basically determined by two very important bodies. The first one is International Court for Botanical Nomenclature. The next one is International Court for the Geological Nomenclature. The next one is Binomial Nomenclature. This nomenclature was given by your Carlos Linnaeus and is also called as father of taxonomy. Taxonomy means what? Identification, classification, nomenclature of a living organism. Then we have seen that it is comprising of two names. The first one is generic name. The second one is a specific epithet. And this like specific epithet basically means the name of the species. But the generic name is the name of the genus. Then comes, generally these are written in the Latin language. Just to show that, uh, just to preserve the Latin language. Not, not to preserve. So this Latin language is basically uh, a dead language. So that we can continue, continuously use that language uh, to provide them uh, like uh, a very important terminology I'm using, extinct. To prohibit it from extinction, we are using this language. Now, when, when they are written, it has to be in italics. When uh, they are or printed, they has to be uh, italics. When they are handwritten, they has to be underlined. Now, the, uh, the generic name will be starting with a capital letter. The species name will be starting with the small letter. So, we have seen what is a taxa. Taxa basically means a group, rank or category. And this taxa basically donates uh, a diff different groups of uh, various size, shape and rank. So, I have, I have given an example of it. And the classification means the process of grouping based on the uh, similar characters. I am giving you an example of uh, the binomial nomenclature so that it becomes clear for you guys. I am giving you the very um, common example for Indians that is uh, Ossimum Sanctum. This Ossimum Sanctum is a scientific name of Tulsi. Here this donates basically your genus and this Sativum donates your species name. So this together leads to your binomial nomenclature and as I told it is basically for your Tulsi or we can call it as the we will be discussing certain more examples in the next classes. Thank you for listening to me. Have a good day.